Friday night here in South Florida. The Fish and the Nationals. The Nationals starting lineup. The uh, Nats having won last night, holding on for dear life at the end to beat the Phillies. They're 48-92. Willie Harris leads it off. Remember, he had a big home run last weekend. Christian Guzman is at shortstop. Ryan Zimmerman had the walk-off shot. A dangerous Adam Dunn's at first. The Hammers having a good year. He's in left. Elijah Dukes with a cannon for an arm in right. Pete Orr is at second. Will Nieves, the catcher, and J.D. Martin is on the mound. Well, as you look at uh, Big Josh Johnson, 6'7", over 250, he looks for win number 15. And you talk about consistency. J.J. this year is 7-2 and two at home with a 2.39 ERA. On the road, he's 7-2, and two, an ERA about 3.5. So he's been consistent all year. The ball club would love to see a nice consistent outing out of him tonight. And uh, it's one of those with on the road trip, uh, Freddie saw just two starters go six innings. He'd like to get that at least out of J.J. tonight. This is the sixth time he has started against the Nationals this year. This is the tenth time in his career, and he is 5-0 and with an ERA of 3.5. And, and that is a pitch that missed someplace. We'll find out soon. It's 1-0. and Tim Welke working balls and strikes. We'll figure out his strike zone as the night goes along. Harris, Guzman, and Zimmerman. And J.J. misses with the first two. Well, we know right off the bat that he's not going to get the low pitch because those were two good sinking fastballs down in the zone. There's a strike. Harris, of course, shot the, uh, I guess, took the first shot against Leo Nunez on that Sunday. The first pitch fastball he hit in the second deck. Christian Guzman would then get an infield single, and then Zimmerman would walk off. That's the only blemish on the Marlins' road trip. A very nice trip, having won five of six, and the ball club steps into tonight, having won seven of eight. There's a strike. Full count, three and two. I tell you what, Willie Harris hit that ball as well as you're going to see one in that ballpark. It went in the second deck. There is Nunez, available tonight. Was not available last night, but the Marlins didn't need him. As they wax the Mets 13 4. JJ misses inside to Harris. Tommy, one of the things the Nationals have been able to do against Josh, and it happened in his last start, they've been able to work him and get the pitch count up early innings. Yep, 82 pitches in that last time out against the Nationals, five innings, even though he only gave up two hits in a run, but three walks. 82 pitches. I think only one strikeout. That gives you a little indication. Probably didn't have his best command. He did leave that game with a 6-1 lead, and the Marlins won at 9-5. John Baker on his way out to the mound to talk to J.J. with the count 1-0. That's one thing, and I think you heard Nick Johnson uh, mention it to Craig. It's a ball club that grinds their at-bats out. They're third in the National League in on-base percentage, the Nationals. I think a lot of that was because Nick Johnson played uh, over half his games. Yeah, that, might, that maybe came down a little bit when he left. <laughs> Absolutely. Harris dives back in. Good base dealer, good speed with Harris. Not running, and Guzman takes a strike. Christian Guzman has had a pretty good year at 295. Always been a, a good hitter, save for the, the first year as a national, where he struggled coming over from the Twins, and then the subsequent years when he was injured. But last year hit 316. And a guy that has been a, an all-star a few times with the Twins and with the Nationals. I'm sure their theory on facing Josh Johnson is be patient, make him work, make him throw pitches, get him out of there after five innings. Amen. Get him out of there is the key. So far, all fastballs. He really hasn't had a chance to, to get in any kind of rhythm or establish any other pitches. Freddie is not calling pitches from the dugout. What he's doing 
He's giving John Baker an idea if he wants to throw to first or not. Managers will do that with a catcher with runners on base. Once they get a chance to see the Nationals run through their signs, if they think they've stolen a sign or have a sign, then they'll give it to the catcher. Guzman fouls it back to the screen. The other thing amazing about that is that it might not even be Freddie giving the signs. It might be Carlos Tosca sitting next to him. <laughs> so there are always uh, different kinds of decoys going on in the dugout. It's a guy with the red hat. <laughs> yeah. Bake doesn't need a lot of help. He is one of the more intelligent catchers that you'll run into in baseball. Harris not running, and Guzman swings and misses. JJ gets a strikeout. Here comes Zimmerman. Here comes the Marlins defense. Well, when you've won seven out of eight, you have a nice streak going. You don't change too many things. Coglin, Maven, and Ross in the outfield. Can't do. Ramirez, Uggla, and Johnson around the infield. And really, the only change we've seen lately is, depending on a lefty or a righty pitcher, John Baker behind the plate tonight with uh, J.D. Martin, a right-hander. So now it's Zimmerman. And his 28 home runs, the 28th was the game winner on that Sunday. A Labor Day weekend. Seemingly uh, all of Zimmerman's walk-off hits or homers have come on some sort of holiday. He had the opening day home run against the Braves two years ago when they opened Nationals Park. He had a Mother's Day walk off. I believe he had a 4th of July walk off against the Marlins. Mm -hmm. Five career walk off homers for a guy that is really coming into his own now and is still only 24. And he goes around, plucked right from the University of Virginia. Zimmerman was the fourth overall pick back in 2005. Shoulder injury last year on a head first slide. Kept him uh, in and out of the lineup with injuries, limited him to just 106 games. Tommy, it was a head first slide that has changed the dynamics of this Nationals team. Remember the Marlins were swept by the Nationals about a month ago. That was in D.C. They were in the middle of an eight-game win streak, and the catalyst was Niger Morgan, who came over from the Pirates. He broke his wrist on a head-first slide into third base. Yeah, Niger Morgan in his 49 games with the Washington Nationals hitting over 350. He was a table setter getting on base for the guys like Zimmerman, Dunn, and Willingham. One, two. Big fastball. Big swing and a miss. Still nothing but fastballs, but he's been able to throw a couple by Guzman and Zimmerman for strikeouts. Here comes the heat. Here it is up in that area, and Zimmerman swings through it. Now the field becomes a little bit lopsided as the shift is on for Adam Dunn. And that brings Cantu over on the first base side of the bag. And Cantu probably, I would expect, would be covering on a stolen base attempt. Because if you bring Hanley over on a steal and Harris is safe and the ball dribbles a bit, he'll take third base because no one's covering third. So what, what do you do? We here? saw that happen one time uh, earlier this year, too. What do you do? Is it Cantu's bag, even though you got a lefty at the plate? It's a tough call because if Cantu leaves his position, then there's a bigger opening over there on the right side where Dunn is more likely to hit it on that side than on the left side. But it's as deep as... Interesting dilemma. Yeah, as deep as Hanley is playing, you're not quite sure who would cover on a steal. Dunn. Smokes it to left. That's it pretty well. Coglin going back to the track. Looks up, and it's gone. And Adam Dunn has gone opposite field for his 37th of the season.
JJ is going to have to mix it up. All fastballs, and Dunn's no uh, a dummy up there at the plate. He knows how to work count. He also found that slot just left of the scoreboard. A foot or two to the right, it hits the scoreboard. But he launches it high in the air, and it slices away from the, the high part of the scoreboard and just sneaks over that lower fence. And the Nationals are on the board first, 2 nothing. There's a slider. And a strike. Dunn closing in on that 40 home run mark where he has lived quite consistently. Now at 37. He had 40 last year. And he's now at 98 RBIs. For a team that's going to lose over 100 games, the Nationals at 92 losses and just 48 wins. Well, the uh, Nationals doing what the Marlins did so well in New York. Jim Riggleman happy that he's seen his ball club jump ahead early. The Marlins were able to do that at City Field. And they've upped J.J.'s pitch count. This is his 21st pitch. Struck him out outside corner. Adam Dunn, an opposite field blast. The Nationals used the long ball to take an early lead. Español vía SAP y es presentado por KFC. All right, the Marlins are down early here. 2 nothing, thanks to that man, Adam Dunn. Here come the Fish, their lineup unchanged really, with Chris Cogman leading it off in left field. Cogman will be followed by Nick Johnson at first. Hanley Ramirez is at shortstop. Jorge Cantu at third base. John Baker will do the catching. Dan Ugla at second base. Cody Ross in right. Cameron Maben out in center field and Josh Johnson on the mound. Coughlin, Johnson, Ramirez to open up this first against J.D. Martin, who misses down low. And what will the Marlins see second time against this guy? Well, they saw a guy had pretty good control, six and two-thirds innings, gave up just six hits and a couple of runs. Kind of a fluid delivery. Decent fastball, not overpowering. Big curveball, uses a slider. One and two. Coughlin at 308, eighth in the National League in hitting. You can see the numbers he's had against the Nationals. Martin's big breaking ball is high. It's two and two. You can also see that Martin likes to get it and throw it. Doesn't like to waste too much time out there. You could hear Tim Welke say that ball's away. So Coughlin has run the count full at three and two. Fights off that fastball. Ten hits on the road trip for young Chris Coughlin. He was 10 for 27. Scored seven runs. 
see the trip. Remember, he had 47 hits to lead all of baseball in the month of August. He already has 17 hits in, hits in September. Swing and a miss. And down he goes. J.D. Martin gets a strikeout to open up his night here in South Florida. Got him with the fastball. Let's uh, check out the defense for the Nationals tonight with the hammer. Josh Willingham, Willie Harris, Elijah Dukes in the outfield. Zimmerman and Dunn, the big guys at the corners. Guzman, Pete Orr is the second baseman. Will Nieves is behind the plate. Here's Johnson. And Nick takes outside. Johnson's season numbers against his old ball club. Very good, and his numbers with the Marlins since arriving here in South Florida, outstanding. An on-base percentage over 500. He's at 355 as a fish. And I think one of the things that we've seen just in watching Johnson, Tommy, and this is his 20th game as a Marlin. He gets the benefit of a lot of calls, I think, because of his reputation. Absolutely. There it's it's kind of like a Greg Maddox on the mound. It is, because he takes with such confidence, and umpires know that Nick has an outstanding eye. And a lot of calls that sometimes for a rookie or a younger player go against that hitter, Nick seems to get, and he's earned it. 22nd walk now as the Marlin. The other number I like 15 RBIs in his 19 games. So he's he's done both. He's gotten on base, but he's also been productive. Oh, he's been outstanding. And he's part of the hamstring twins that uh, line up in the lineup. Nick Johnson and then Hanley Ramirez. They can do damage with their bats, but right now not with their uh, legs, so to speak. And Hanley has done a lot of damage against the Washington Nationals in his career. Over 350, 18 career home runs against Washington. Hanley drives that ball to left center field. Hits it pretty well. Harris is back. He's looking up. That ball's gone. Do I hear 19? Top of the scoreboard and out of here. Do I hear 19? Wow. Just like that. A tie ball game. Yeah, a little smile from Hanley. Why not? Well, that's a good way to bounce back. You answer a two-run homer with a two-run homer. Eight-game hitting streak now for Hanley. He's 12 for his last 26. Oh, that pitch was up, and he jumped on it. It kind of got lost in the twilight. Not sure if Willie Harris even saw it leave the yard, but it did. Can two now. Jorge drives at the center. Harris back. And he makes the catch. So some good swings against J.D. Martin in this first inning. And up comes Baker. J.D. Martin out of Ridgecrest, California. Getting his second start against the Fish. Strike to Bake. Happy to finally get a hit in City Field. Baker had not had success in that new ballpark. He was one for five last night, singling in the eighth inning. One for eight in that series. The man they call the body. Baker, a, a workout fiend. He's a... Uh, CrossFit theme loves to work out and it's a line smash at hammer and left hammer knows those lights and how difficult they can be He makes the catch inning over Two run homer by the Nationals two run homer by the Marlins
homer. There's a chopper into left field off the bat of Elijah Dukes. And the Nationals, who, as we've told you, are a very good offensive team. Have a leadoff single. Dukes, the Tampa native, brings up Pete Orr, and then the catcher, Will Nieves. You now you look up and down the, uh, the matchups for Josh Johnson against a lot of these hitters. You don't think about Pete Orr, but Pete Orr is 6 for 11 against J.J. Got him to pop it up. Cantu should have it, and he does. Josh could use a few of those. One pitch, one outs. And his pitch count at 23 right now. Well, he's got the bottom two hitters now. He's got the catcher, Will Nieves, and then the pitcher coming up. So an opportunity. Oh, you know what ah, the, hear the music. You hear the music. You know it's the mother of all scoreboards. The Cubs won. They're hot right now. But uh, the Marlins are focused on what Philadelphia and the Mets are doing scoreless in the second. You see Colorado further down is in San Diego tonight. I guess tonight they are our Padres. The Dodgers and the Giants go at it tonight as well. Will Nieves. Yeah, the matchup in Philadelphia, Nelson Figueroa for the Mets and Cole Hamels for the Phillies. That's a four game series with a double header on Sunday. JJ gets a breaking ball for a strike. Josh looking for win number 15, trying to go 15 and 4 on the season. And his name has kind of dropped out of the Cy Young talk in terms of the top guys. Tim Lincecum is still up there. Adam Wainwright has thrust his name in there along with his teammate Chris Carpenter. Right now, those are probably the top three. Maybe not in that particular order, but Wainwright, Carpenter, and Lincecum. Be interesting to see how Lincecum bounces back in his next start. Off of his back injury. There's a grounder to Uggla's left. Dan picks it up onto second and throws it away. Hanley trying to pick it out of the uh, sliding Dukes in a case where the Marlins probably would have been better off just getting it out at first base, especially with the pitcher coming up. Yeah, and I think if he had to think that over again, he would go to first base. It looked like he had trouble right here getting the ball to throw, and he, he threw like a changeup to Hanley Ramirez because he didn't have a good grip on the ball. Would have been a tough play at first, but he had time. Remember, Nieves, the catcher, hit the ball. So now with the fielder's choice, that's what it's called. The pitcher will be up there, J.D. Martin, to bunt. It's a good slide by Elijah Dukes. Martin takes a fastball up. Three for 17 in his brief career. Guy that uh, had Tommy John surgery. Took him a while to get to the big leagues. He was a first round pick. One of those supplemental sandwich picks. Strike. Nick Johnson. Because of the hamstring. Trying to cheat a little extra. So he's getting in there closer sooner. Pops it up, and Baker makes a great play. Oh, that's nicely done. John Baker came out of the crouch and makes a nice running catch. And this ball wasn't that high in the air, so he had to react quickly. Didn't have time to flip the mask off. Was able to pick up the ball. That's hard to do. Picks the ball up, sees where it is, and goes right to it. You're down in the crouch. Got all that equipment on, and he made a terrific play.
Top of the order, Willie Harris, who walked and scored. By the way, the Phillies have announced who's going to start the first game of that doubleheader on Sunday. Kyle Kendrick. Who's been pitching in the minor leagues and out of the bullpen. Yeah, I think Jamie Moyer's pitching the second game of that series. Yep, Moyer gets the second game. And the second game on Sunday, which is the fourth game of the series, is a Pedro Martinez start. So they're saving Pedro for the nationally televised night game of the doubleheader. John Main is going to start for the Mets as he rejoins that rotation in that first game on Sunday. Mike Pelfrey against Moyer tomorrow. That's the big Fox game tomorrow at 4.05. Mets at Phillies. That'll be a good one to watch. Big trots out to talk to JJ. Now you want to make sure you, you make good pitches. We've seen the power uh, of Willie Harris with that the big home run he hit in the ninth inning the other day. He's had a, a solid year, 17 doubles, four triples. But his playing time was cut short when Nigel Morgan was with the Nationals before he got hurt. He got some playing time early because the Nationals had such a dysfunctional roster. They were overloaded with outfielders. They had like a rotating outfield uh, uh, situation, kind of like rotating pitchers. And even though Harris is an outfielder, he can play second base. So he got a chance to come in and play infield. Two and two. JJ punches him out. That's a nice comeback hitting for Josh Johnson. Willie Harris. Ballpark today, purchase a current Marlin season ticket plan and reserve your spot. 1 877 Marlins, the number to call. Make sure you don't miss out on premium seating in the new Marlins ballpark. 171 more games, and includes this one, until we are sitting in the air conditioning with a roof and uh, all those gorgeous amenities. Just not, south, not worrying just about south the of weather. Here. Yeah, not worrying about the weather, the weather reports. Checking on all the new uh, food venues. You know, you and I like to do that. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Dan Ugla, Cody Ross, and Cameron Maben against J.D. Martin. 
And Ugla takes outside. Two homers in New York. Ugla now 27 on the season. He's driven in 75. And that breaking ball misses away. Dan's hit a few home runs against these Nationals. 12 career home runs against Washington. Outside corner. They're your Marlin leaders. Hanley has added to his total. He's hit his 23rd tonight. And Ugla sprays that one into the seats. The count is two and two. Ugla is the strikeout leader for the Marlins, having punched out 125 times. But he is also the walk leader at 84. In fact, Dan Ugla has walked as many times this year as Nick Johnson has. So it looks like this year, statistically, his strikeouts have come down or coming down. His walks are up. And his batting average sitting right now at 242. And the home runs in the uh, general area that he usually resides. 27 certainly has a chance to get to 30. Hit 260 last year, 32 homers, 92 driven in. Breaking ball is up and in. But he punched out 171 times last year. And there are the home run totals, the on base percentage numbers. Goes after an outside fastball and lifts it in the air between Harris and Dukes. And Dukes makes the catch. So when out here in the second, Cody Ross is coming up. We saw on the mother of all scoreboards, the Cubs were winners. The Cubs are kind of sneaking up a little bit. Not necessarily on the, uh, on the Cardinals. St. Louis's lead is still at 11 games. But in the wild card, the Cubs, with that win, pushed themselves in front of Atlanta eight games back in the wild card. The Cubs now at 72 and 67. There you go. Good look at it. Cross. Big swing and a miss. Eight hits on the road trip for Cody. Seven RBIs. And he had two doubles on the road trip against this guy, J.D. Martin. Cody's total now in doubles, 36. You know, very quietly, Carlos Marmol has settled into the closer's role. Ever since he took over from uh, Kevin Gregg. One, two coming. And Cody fouls it back. Chipper Jones today making somewhat of a surprising announcement. He's mired in an awful slump. We saw that when we last saw the Braves. But he said if he doesn't get better and he continues to be a mediocre player, that he will walk away from the game. Hyde pop done. Makes the catch. And if he did so, he'd be... Walking away from a pretty good chunk of change. And uh, he acknowledged that in his um, in his quotes today, talking to a, a variety of reporters saying, yeah, he understands that there's a pile of money there, but he said he would not feel right with that Braves organization being a mediocre player, handicapping the organization by taking up a, a huge chunk of payroll. You, you don't hear that from from players very often at all. Change up to Maven and it's 0-1. Cameron goes after the fastball. 
Martin is a good arm, and he's a guy that the Nationals are hoping can stick in their rotation. His ERA in 10 starts, 4-3-5. And so far, only the Hanley Ramirez home run has put a dent in his night tonight. 2-2. may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Florida Marlins. Guzman leads it off. Johnson starts him with a fastball that's towards the line. Coughlin there and he makes a running catch. Nice to have his athleticism out there and that makes up for his lack of outfield experience and skills. Yeah, I think he's learning to get better jumps. Uh, we're seeing that, and you're right. With a little athleticism, a little speed, he was able to get a jump and, and make this play. Keeps his balance and stays right there. I think the next time you read the uh, disclaimer, we're going to have to, we always throw in some oh, obscure other team names. Because we've run out of... Well, but here we are at home. You need to throw in brought to you by Brett Barbary. All right. <laughs> we can do that. Zimmerman. If he stays on track, looks like he's going to puncture the 100 RBI mark. And hit more than 30 homers. Be the second time in his career over 100 R RBIs. He's already established career high in home runs. And that's inside. It's three and one. Seven and one last year was JJ. So if you add the numbers up, he is 21 and 5. Adam Dunn on deck. Lost him. And so Dunn, the guy that took JJ out, comes up with a runner at first base again. I thought it was interesting. I was figuring it out the other day. 21 and 5 since uh, coming back from Tommy John surgery. Before Tommy John surgery, Josh Johnson was 12 and 10. And a better ratio now since the surgery and strikeouts to walks. I 
I read a report, and it was either a Wall Street Journal, some highfalutin publication, not just uh, some not just some rag. Not. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you for that. And they were exploring the thought that it's it's kind of a common belief amongst even pitchers that guys throw harder after they have Tommy John surgery than they did before and and as Mark Wiley comes out to talk to Josh Johnson and this was a, a year-long study scientific study interviewing the uh, all the great surgeons the Dr. Andrews and all of that and the conclusion was yeah they do kind of throw harder than just before the surgery but not two or three years before the surgery because just before the surgery they're hurt yeah they, they're not throwing their their utmost uh, velocity right yeah. and, and they come back healthy and that puts them you know a couple years before they had the surgery and I think the other misconception it's not a hundred percent no there there are pitchers who have had Tommy John surgery and not come back with as good as stuff. Now Dunn was sitting on a 2-0 fastball and he got it. Look at the <laughs> look at the symmetry of Adam Dunn's career and what he's done. And I think and even you and I discussed it at the start of the year. It would be interesting to see where he's going to end up this year because he's not playing half of his games in Cincinnati, a great home run hitters park. Now that is a track record when you see those numbers and the consistency. Remember the last time J.J. started against the Nationals? He struggled the first couple of innings, then put it together and retired the last 12 he faced. And what he did when he finally put it together, and, and I talked to him a little bit about it, he, he started to pitch. He used a few change-ups, but he started to use his slider. Wasn't trying to overthrow and just throw fastballs. Right now, he's still kind of in that fastball mode. He's, he's thrown a few other pitches. And that's exactly where to go to get the big guy. Goes up with a 96-mile-an-hour fastball and gets done. Now comes Willingham. And I think the difference in this outing, boy, that's a perfect, perfect location, is in his five innings against the Nationals in Washington, just one strikeout. He already has five tonight. One of those was Willingham back in the first. A strike to the hammer. One of the things you have to look at for Willingham, you see the uh, season numbers, bottom of your screen, 280, 22 homers, 59 RBIs. But that's coming just 363 at bats, as opposed to a guy that's played every day. Zimmerman has 537 at bats. Yeah, and even the early on at bats were sporadic. If you go back just the last 99 games, since he started playing a little bit more, he's hitting near 300. Jim Riggleman, the skipper, and even Manny Acta, when uh, he was still the Nationals manager, effusive in their praise of Willingham in the clubhouse. Well, he's a solid guy on the field. We certainly uh, got to know him and his family. Solid guy off the field. It just brings that presence every day. Brings the same thing every day to the clubhouse. He is a guy, and I say this with no knowledge of talking to anybody in the front office. He is a guy that somewhere in his career you get a sense that he might be wearing a Marlin uniform again. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I don't think that would be a, a surprise because he's he's very well liked, 
by uh, everybody in the front office and with the ball club. And such a solid presence. And he's, you know, Hammer has a track record. When he stays healthy, we, he can keep that back healthy. He has a very consistent track record as well. Nine years in the Marlins organization at one time thought to be their catcher of the future. He's fighting off Josh Johnson fastballs right now, right and left. JJ's pitch count has hit 50. And it's only the third inning. If he doesn't have a, an inning uh, or two with low pitch counts, he, he's going to be five innings again. And the Nationals will be able to go after the bullpen. No swing. Hammers aboard. Jim Reynolds down at first base making that call. One thing Hammer was always pretty good at doing because he has that short compact swing. He was always good at checking his swing and kind of disguising it even if he goes a little bit too far. He probably held that but he's able to stop it and because it's so compact he can do that. Now JJ has to go after Dukes. I think for every young pitcher and Josh Johnson is still a young pitcher at 25 even though he's been in the big leagues now full time since 2006 for every young pitcher managers are looking at innings pitched workloads as you get into September and it's hard to do when you have a young pitcher on a contending team. The frustrating part watching him is some will say well maybe he's hit the wall but his velocity has been good. He's kind of gotten out of the realm of pitching and just uh, has been trying to overthrow. Good breaking ball can't to picks it up steps on the bag. It was a long one but no damage for JJ in the third. by Corona, official sponsor of the timeout. Let's check in with Craig Minervini. Craig, what's up? Thank you, Rich. Late night for both of these ball clubs. Let's show you the uh, timeline for the Marlins last night after the, uh, the Mets game there. They started at a little after 7 o'clock last night. 7-11 was the first pitch time over at City Field. And then the ball club went across to uh, Newark Airport. Why? Because you can't take off at uh, Flushing's LaGuardia 
after midnight. You can't chance it, so you got to have the plane somewhere. So they had to take a bus over to Newark, New Jersey. Didn't leave by the time they loaded up till after one. Didn't arrive till close to 3:30. By the time you get your bags, get home, guys will be lucky to get to sleep before five. Now the only thing is the Nats had a similar story. Talking to them, they didn't get to their hotel down here in South Florida until 3:30. They played, of course, the Phillies last night, so not much of an edge there. But I do want to ask Tommy just the to, to return, not only for us, but for the players. I mean, they have a little bit of an easy day, no BP. But still, uh, do, you, do you feel the effects when the game gets going? Do you kind of get in game mode and uh, forget about being tired? You know, sometimes what happens, and it's good to, to just come and not take BP, just to get dressed, get yourself loose and ready to play. I always found sometimes it's the next night that you, that you have the effects. Uh, you kind of go on an adrenaline, a few hours sleep. And uh, like you said, though, both teams are in the same boat. Nationals got in uh, the wee hours as well. But I think sometimes, especially when you're going coast to coast, I always always found that it was maybe the next night. S staying in the same time zone, a little different. Look at J.J. spraying that one to left. Hammer makes a diving stop and prevents a double. But Josh Johnson with a solid swing. And a single here in the third. That's the only hit the Marlins have other than the Hanley homer. Boy, that is a nice swing. Of course, it was uh, J.D. Martin that Josh Johnson hit a home run against when they matched up uh, the last time. So he can hit this guy. A little smile. He's seven for his last 24. He got off to a slow start hitting, but seven for 24 is a 292 average over his last 24 ABs. Coughlin now, and then Johnson. Coughlin struck out back in the first. In listening to Craig and looking at that timeline and hearing you say it's the, the next night, the Marlins are in their sixth month of next nights. <laughs> That's the thing about baseball. It's, yeah. a, it's a cumulative effect. You do this for six months, and you get to September and have a few nights like this, and uh, you're really running on empty. I thought you were going to say, looking at me saying the next night, how can I feel worse than I feel right now? <laughs> <laughs> Coughlin fouls it back. Every sport you have to battle through injuries. You have to play through injuries. Mm -hmm. NFL, in the NBA, and the NHL for sure. But baseball's that way. I mean, if you went up and down each lineup and ask a guy, how you feeling? Each guy will say, eh, well, this hurts and this hurts. Nobody feels 100% at this point. No. Coughlin, of course, got hit on the hand and jammed an ankle on the last road trip. And as we talked about last night, I'm sure J.D. Martin, I, I don't, I'm not sure, but he may have flown in early too, as did Josh Johnson. He didn't fly in with the team. There's a chopper over the middle. J.J.'s going to stop, and they'll get the out at first. That's good heads-up base running by Josh Johnson. Didn't want to run into the double play. Yeah, if he uh, continues on, there are, there are a lot of uh, regular players who don't have this smarts. But if he continues running, he might get tagged, and then the Nationals can turn to double play. But he stops, a little stutter step, or realizes he can't tag Johnson and wants to make sure he gets the out. So Nick Johnson now with J.J. at second and one down. Martin walked him back in the first inning. I remember talking to pitchers years ago, and you'd ask a, a pitcher, a starting pitcher, all right, you're going to make 30, 35 starts. How many of those starts are you actually 100%? Nick Johnson drives it to right, hits it pretty well, dukes his back at the warning track. J.J. tags. And he's on his way to third after about a 390 foot fly ball off the bat of Nick Johnson. Boy, he just got under that. Uh, <laughs> squaring it up a little better, he hits it out, but just got under it enough for Dukes to camp under it. But again, good base running by Josh to go back and tag up. He realizes it's not going to be a home run, goes back to tag. He, and then, he, you know, if it is a home run, he can score. But pitchers will say out of those starts, 100%. Maybe seven or eight times. Ten tops. The Nationals showing the utmost respect to Hanley Ramirez. Saw him bounce one off the top of the National League scoreboard and hit it out. Back in the first. Are going to flat out walk him. And so Jorge Cantu 
will get the at bat. There's the swing. Looked like a hanging breaking ball. Didn't have a whole lot on it. And for Hanley, home run number 23, RBI is 97 and 98. You may see it could change if or hey Cantu gets on a little run, but you may see more teams start doing that. Tell you what, Cantu barreled one up. He hit a, a line drive to deep center field his first time against Martin. So Cantu steps in. Andy Fox before the ball game was talking to him about J.D. Martin. And he said he wrote himself a note and put it in his back pocket just to remind every base runner that he has a quick move to first. And it's the move he just showed. It's one where he starts into the stretch and then whips it over. So if you're a runner and you sometimes see runners start to get a little walking lead boy, you cross over and get crossed up in between you could be picked off. And not that Hanley's going to be running with that hamstring but Fox said his move is good enough and quick enough that even guys that are just taking normal leads can fall asleep and get picked. And we're talking about Tommy John surgery with Josh Johnson J.D. Martin had Tommy John surgery in 05. See, if Tommy John knew now or then what he knows what is going on now, he would have trademarked at least the name of the surgery and gotten a small percentage of each procedure. Go to Dr. Andrews and go say, hey, look, if you if you're gonna call this thing. Tommy John surgery. Yeah, then I, I gotta have a little piece of the action. Let's make a deal, and maybe, yeah. and maybe at Dr. Andrews' practice, there's the Tommy John wing. Yeah, and maybe at that time you don't know down the road of the success it's going to have. So you go, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Can't two, out to left. Hammer went back. Now comes in, and makes the catch. And so the Nationals pitch around Hanley, and it works. Marlins leave a couple, and we are still two two. Fireworks spectacular. The Marlins and the Nationals at 610 celebrate Hispanic Heritage Night. Fans get a Marlins body flag courtesy of Delta Dental. 1877 Marlins. Go back to that sign. That's a great sign. The Ken Rosenthal uh, column the other day talking about uh, his selections at this point, and Chris Coglin would be his rookie of the year.
And the fans picking up on that. Yeah, it's nice to know that uh, Coughlin's Cowgirls read Ken Rosenthal. And there it is. By the way, if ever Josh Johnson wanted to have a low pitch quick inning, this is the inning because remember, he started things with a base hit. He was on the base paths the entire inning. So he hadn't had a whole lot of chance to sit and relax. Pete Orr runs the count to two and one. Will Nieves and then J.D. Martin himself coming up. In the fourth, 2-2 two -two game. Two homers, Adam Dunn, two-run shot, Hanley Ramirez. Two-run shot. And each of the uh, the home runs also drove in a previously walked hitter. So a walk scoring on those home runs. Is that like a previously owned vehicle? You pre-owned, yeah. Certified walks. Swing and a miss. Oh, Down like goes Orr. It has a better sound to it than used car. <laughs> you have a pre pre owned vehicle for you. <laughs> Here's a previously owned duck. I fly! <laughs> he made it. Though he has an extensive warranty that uh, we will guarantee. All time Marlins, who's the only player ever born in the District of Columbia? Mm. Marlin player in D.C. That's a good one. I haven't had uh, extensive research on that one. So, you think, you uh, can't think, help you out there. Is it uh, is it BC or CC? <laughs> it would be it would be nice if it if it was, but I don't think so. Well, Coughlin was a uh, started his young years in Maryland, didn't he? His first nine years, I believe, then moved, lived in Maryland, then moved to Tampa. So that's a possibility. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was CC. Which probably Brett Barbary, or as you were hoping for, an obscure Marlin. <laughs> Two and one to Nieves. He reached on a fielder's choice back in the second. Phillies have stretched their lead to 2-0 over the Mets in the fourth. Cole Hamill's a three-hit shutout so far. Ugla gets a second chance against Nieves, and this time he gets the out. So two outs, and here is J.D. Martin. Well, that's a good start. Two outs, and he gets to go after the pitcher. There's your score. The mother of all scoreboards will come blasting through here in an inning or two. We'll get you up to date on everything that's going on in the wild card race and the East. We probably won't have scores from out west until uh, possibly Marlins live, but Craig will have those for you. Colorado at San Diego. Will the Rockies ever lose another game? The Dodgers, who are kind of stumbling towards the finish line, are in San Francisco to take on the Giants, but the Giants have lost two straight. And we've talked about guys getting banged up. The Rockies have played two or three games without Tulowitz gets short. He's had some back stiffness. Uh, their closers uh, resting his elbow, Houston Street elbow tendonitis. The Giants have lost two in a row, but they have Matt Kane on the mound. It's Kane against Corota. Dodgers and Giants renew that great rivalry. JJ has the exact inning you were hoping for. That's good. Nice and quick and efficient. One, two, three in the fourth.
I, you know what? That's I'm all for that. You know, I'm all for the, the the haircut thing, but I don't know if I want Bake to get the Clippers on me. Maybe we have maybe we have Hugo go after our hair. See, Bake had, and I don't know if he did this on purpose. He had a, a, a I don't want to say an awful haircut, but it was not a a uh, not a haircut you see every day. It, it, it wasn't quite going back to the uh, mullet of old. But it was kind of short on the side, a little long on the back. It was almost, it's almost a throwback haircut. But you know what? If the Marlins... I'm, make, in, I'm in for that. I'm in for that, too. Yeah, I know you are, too. Um, and whatever Bake wants, he can, he can have at it. Baker hit the ball well his first time up. He lined... To shallow left, Josh Willingham made the catch, peering through the lights. Martin with a change up, gets a strike, and it's one and one. You know, I was talking about the uh, the Rockies, banged up as as all teams are, but they got big hits last night from Jason Giambi and Garrett Atkins. I haven't heard Atkins' name a whole lot lately, but Ian Stewart and Tulowitzki both have some back stiffness. The guy that has just been the uh, killer for the Marlins is Seth Smith. Mm. I think 31 of his 51 RBIs this year have come in the seventh inning or later. And whenever there's a walk-off win, he seems to be involved in it somehow, getting a big hit. And Jim Tracy even had to patchwork a game last night because uh, their starter, uh, Jose Contreras, only went three innings. Here's the 2 2. Baker fouls it off. I think, and we started the discussion yesterday, we were talking about manager of the year candidates. Yeah, but yesterday and today all kind of ran together, yeah. so we can, we can kind of continue it. I think Freddie certainly is in the discussion. If there's a leader in the clubhouse right now, it's Jim Tracy. It would be Jim Tracy. Just because he took over a team that was languishing and they turned around under his watch. And I'll tell you what, at the beginning of the year, especially during spring training, because we see them a lot, Tony La Russa will get votes because I don't know if a lot of people picked the Cardinals this year. I'm with you on that. I, I believe he should. Of course, he, he he might want to share the award with uh, John Mozelik, his uh, general manager, the guy that acquired Matt Holiday. That that helps. The guy who helped him get uh, Holiday and, and Lugo is doing well, and Mark DeRosa. Yeah. And we'll see them all next week. Yeah, that's going to be a, a good three-game series. Baker, very patient at bat, works a walk, and here comes Ugla. Who else would you give uh, consideration to in the National League uh, Manager of the Year? We got three on the list with the Tracy, Freddie, and Bruce La Bochy. Bruce Bochy and the Giants. That's a good call, too. And, and you know, he's going to get some votes because they've kind of hung in there, not with a whole. Uh, Bobby Cox. Bobby Cox has had, there's that move from Martin. Bobby Cox has had such a. A solid rotation. Both Bochi and Cox have had the maybe the two best rotations in the National League, health-wise, consistently, and in effectiveness throughout the season. Ugla could not check his swing. He went around. Got fooled on that big 12-6 to curveball and couldn't hold it back. But other than that, I really can't think of any other. Qualifying managers. Struck him out. Ugly drops the bat. And there's one out here in the fourth. Not real pleased with that call of Tim Welkies. Out fly. Well, the duck breaks up the tension. Who is the. Uh, only player in Marlins history to be born in the District of Columbia. Outfire. Brendan Donnelly. Uh, Brendan Donnelly. 
Marlins are happy to have him back. Cody fouls it off. Well, J.D. Martin just as effective as the last time the Marlins faced him. The mistake that he made was the backup slider or BP fastball or whatever it was that Hanley hit out in the first inning. Another young pitcher, he, he got his opportunity when Scott Olson went on the disabled list. And he's a guy that um, we talked about was a first round pick of the Cleveland Indians, a sandwich pick. 35th overall back in 2001. Had the arm problems and the Tommy John surgery and, and ended up in the minors for eight years. Before the Nationals signed him. As a free agent. This offseason. Yeah, he was actually uh, in that. Uh, Sandwich pick. He was the compensation pick for the uh, Indians losing Manny Ramirez. <laughs> that's how long ago it was. Yeah, yeah. So that's a little claim to fame that he has. Cody off the end of the bat. Martin picks it up and gets him out. And JD Martin just keeps uh, cruising along here. He struck out Maven the first time he faced. Yeah, him. this will be interesting. You have first base open, but you have J.D. Martin pitching to a right-hander who he struck out. Even though you have the pitcher on deck, but Josh Johnson hit a line drive base hit off of him, homered off of him earlier in the year. So I, I guess that they're going to go after Cameron Maven. There is J.J. Maybe a, a ground ball in the hole. It's short. Guzman flips it across just in time to get the speedy Maven. And the inning is over. Marlins leave another. We've played four. Nothing settled yet. 2-2. Two -two. Baseball está disponible en español vía SAP y es presentado por KFC. And you can access the uh, Spanish portion of our broadcast with those two fine gentlemen by pressing the SAP button on your remote or your set. 
Cookie and Raul. We're not able to speak with them tonight, but we've sent our, our greetings over there. Tommy wrote them a, a very nice handwritten note. It's always nice. It, it always feels like home when we see Cookie and Raul. That's a nice personal touch on your own stationery. Thank you. <laughs> Here's Willie Harris. He goes after a breaking ball and hits it a mile high. Baker tosses the mask and it takes a left turn and lands just wide of the screen. The ball took a funny turn. It, it, initially, it looked like John Baker was going to be able to make the play. See, that's what we mean by the haircut. Uh, that yeah, Bake I think had. you saw the sample size there. <laughs> I mean, we're okay with Bakes saying to get the haircut. But I don't know if we if we want Bakes' actual haircut, the one that he's sporting right now. I think if you want to see us in that haircut, just watch inside the Marlins, the broadcasters, and, and when we were younger, 15, 20 <laughs> years ago, we had it. <laughs> One and two, Josh Johnson into his fifth inning. Both pitchers very close in pitch count. Martin has thrown 73, and this is Josh Johnson's 73rd of the night. Well, because of the off day, Josh did have an extra day before this start tonight. So instead of going on five days, he's on his sixth day. That's a, a luxury that the Marlins have is they don't really have in September any wacky rain out scenarios except for the double header against the Phillies on that Tuesday. And that was because of a scheduling conflict. A Monday night football game in this stadium moved the Marlins Monday night game to a Tuesday doubleheader against the Phillies. Lost the leadoff man. Yeah, that's tough there. And in and, and looking at uh, Josh's numbers over the year, 28 starts. In 26 of the 28 starts, he's walked three or fewer. Well, that was number four on the night. And that's what gets that pitch count up. Seven strikeouts. Christian Guzman has struck out and flied out. Yeah, the unfortunate thing, Rich, and obviously because the Marlins are tenants and something else they won't have to deal with in 2012. At this point of the year, the last thing you want to do is play the team you're contending with in a doubleheader. You'd rather play single games, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But because the Marlins are tenants, they are forced to play that doubleheader against the Phillies. I wonder if when the Marlins do move into the new ballpark, if they'll get their security deposit back. They've kept things very neat and tidy, so I would expect the cleaning deposit at least to get back. We haven't talked about Sunday starter. You know, there was some question uh, how Rick Vandenberg was going to be. I, I think the Sunday starter is going to be Chris Bolstead. Freddie talked about that today. Two to Guzman, so Volstad, and it doesn't pre preclude Vandenherk from coming back and making the subsequent start. But it's John Landon, the lefty, who'll be on the mound. One and two. Anibal Sanchez tomorrow night. 
against Marcos Estrada. JJ paying a lot of attention to Willie Harris over there. He has nine steals. He's made a lot of throws over the first. Just not sharp. And this is kind of like the first couple of innings in his outing in Washington before he put it together. Just hasn't been able to get it all there, but to show you how good he is, it's still just a 2 2 game. That one foul back. Marcos Estrada is a right hander and has not pitched this year, though he has pitched in the big leagues. It'll be his first big league start. He made 11 relief appearances last year. Product of Long Beach State, Glendale Community College. Finally, he finishes off. A pesky Guzman. I'll bet you Marco Estrada played games at Casey Stengel Field in Glendale, the great old ballpark. <laughs> season ticket holders, be on the lookout for your season ticket renewal package. You can renew your seats today and enjoy maximum savings and rewards. Hold your seating for the new Marlins ballpark. Renew by phone, 1 877 Marlins, or online at Marlins. Dot com. Zimmerman's third time through against JJ. Harris not running at first. I'm a bit surprised actually that the Nationals haven't run. Yeah, I'm surprised, especially with Willie Harris reaching to lead the inning off. Got a good lead. Not running in Zimmerman. Hits it high in the air to center. Maybe tracks it down. So JJ's got a couple outs here in the fifth. Nothing comes easy. The third out. He would like to make Adam Dunn that guy. But Dunn hit a two run homer in the first, struck out in the third. Here's a case now if you're Willie Harris, you might be a little hesitant to steal because if you steal the first base open, you might walk Adam Dunn. So now if you do it, you may do it if he gets two strikes on it. Flips up a slider for a strike. Remember the last time got ahead and then went upstairs twice with real good fastballs to strike him out. Just a three game series and three in St. Louis four in Cincinnati. And after next week's road trip the Marlins return back for their final homestand. So only one more homestand after this and that's the three gamer with the Phillies including that Tuesday night doubleheader on the 22nd and a three gamer against the Mets. Didn't miss by much. Dunn's a guy like Nick Johnson. You were you were saying earlier, if it's a close pitch, and Nick takes it, more often than not, it's going to be called a ball. Well, Dunn's the same way because he has such a good eye and is so patient up there. That one hasn't come down yet. Well, he went up and in again with that fastball. It looked like Dunn made a little adjustment, had a pretty good swing at that one. I think he goes back up there though. That's a ball that if we're playing in uh, one of the dome stadiums. 
that ball hits something because it's in foul territory and it was so high. If we're in Houston, I think that bangs off something. Arizona, it's going to get something. Yeah, it might hit somebody's tray of nachos in a sweep. <laughs> Active leaders for plate appearance. Walks, Tommy, Giambi, Dunn, Nick Johnson on that list. There's a ground ball. Ugg has got to go far to his right and make a throw to first. Good play by Ugla. He's used to making that throw from behind the bag at second, not from shallow right center field. And he gets done. J.J. is through. Who uh, just like the Marlins all got back to their homes here in South Florida 4 5 a.m. in the morning Gabby Sanchez is gonna lead this inning off and so the Marlins get their five innings from Josh Johnson and Sanchez takes a knee-high strike and it's one and one little surprise uh, only because the part of the order that's coming up for the for the Nationals uh, 89 pitches 82 pitches last time for JJ and you'd like to get at least six innings but because of the walks the four walks and also his eight strikeouts he had a good pop on his fastball Ryan Sanchez getting loose but with a lot of strikeouts and four walks that pitch count's going to get up there so Sanchez against Martin not been an easy year at this level for Sanchez. One for eight as a fish. Got a nice pinch hit the other night at City Field. You see his minor league career numbers. And definitely a guy that will go into spring training next year battling for a job. Hard thing for Sanchez and his reputation coming up in the minor leagues is a guy that good plate discipline, a guy that doesn't go out of the zone all that much. That's all well and good, but when you're only getting three or four bats a week, it's hard to maintain that. And you could tell on that swing, he had gone after a couple breaking balls and then got busted in and strikes out on the fastball. Yeah, he got tied up with that heater inside. But you're right, if you, if you don't play, it's really hard to 
to keep that plate disciplined. Good movement on that fastball, too. Good location. I think a lot of people say, well, why hasn't he played? And the answer, I and mean, we addressed this on the road trip, there really hasn't been a place for him to play. He's a corner infielder, and the Marlins have Nick Johnson at first. Jorge Cantu has been productive at either corner and very good defensively at first base, especially. Coughlin fouls it off. I think in probably June and July when the struggles of Emilio Bonifacio continued. That, that might have been the only spot you, you, you may have seen Sanchez, but he's more comfortable at first base yeah, he, than he, he is at third base. He was playing some games at third in AAA, but I think he is more comfortable at first. Coughlin takes down low. Already nine ABs against Martin. Three one pitches a strike at three and two. 0 for two in this one. Fastball, sharp ground ball. Guzman spins around and just gets Cogman. Christian Guzman can still play out there. His range may be diminishing a bit, but not his glove work. Well, and, and you compare it all of a sudden now. Here's Guzman, who's known for uh, being pretty good defensively, but he's made 18 errors, and Hanley Ramirez has made eight. Most errors at shortstop for Call, Tejada. Hanley was on top of that list last year. He led the National League in shortstop errors with 22. And that hits Johnson. Let's hope Nick didn't tweak the hamstring on his way down. Yeah, this is one of those pitches down and in. You, you just can't get away from. It's it's a lot easier, believe it or not, and he got him on that left thigh. It's a lot easier to move that upper body out of the way than to get the lower half out of the way. But the way Nick's been running with the sore hamstring is not going to affect the speed at first base. So here's Hanley. And Martin going to be extra careful with him. Hanley blasted one to deep left center for a two-run homer in the first. And the Nationals just went ahead and intentionally walked him in the third. That paid off when Jorge Cantu hit a shallow fly ball out to finish off that inning. 2-2 game, bottom of the fifth. And while, and here comes Jim Riggleman out to the mound. I don't see anybody warming up, nor have I seen anyone warming up. Nor is anybody starting. I think they just answered the phone. Randy Knorr, bullpen catcher, veteran big league catcher. And so Riggleman is probably discussing, hey, it's 2-0 and against Hanley Ramirez. I know first base isn't open, but second base is. And so be very careful what you do here. Because you have handled Jorge Cantu, who's on deck. You may have said that, too. And he's at 90 pitches. This could be his last inning of work. And I think uh, Riggleman's words were just don't throw him one over the plate. Logan Kenzie, former Marlin, and Ron Vallone, hero of last night. And that's ball four. 
So it's not an intentional walk, but it's it's close. And again, incumbent on Jorge Cantu to make this strategy backfire. And we saw and we have seen this year Jorge Cantu get big hits in these situations. The Marlins have just two hits. The Nationals have just two hits. It's going to be tough to score Nick Johnson from second base, though. Uh, and a ball in the gap is going to be tough to score Hanley from first. But you're right. Be tougher on the single for Johnson to score. And you have a real good arm in right field with Dukes. And Hammer's adequate, good, accurate arm. Knee high strike, one and one. Breaking ball fouls it back, it's one and two. Marlins getting no help from the Mets. Cole Hamels still throwing a three hit shutout. In the bottom of the fifth, Phillies two nothing. Over the Mets. Freddie and the Fish, 10 over at 75 and 65, having won seven of eight, including this ball game tonight. 22 games left in this season. Yeah, with the uh, the way the Marlins have played the Nationals and, and the Mets, the Marlins are 34 and 23 against the National League East, but within their own division. Cantu back to the mound. Martin flips to first. And twice now, the Nationals have pitched around Hanley to get Cantu. And it's still 2-2. Two -two. Nine eleven here. The ball player is all wearing the red hats, and I'm with uh, four gentlemen from Miami's finest here. Who moments ago not only got a chance to throw out the first pitch. I want to ask you about that first, Detective Elijah. Tell you throughout the first pitch with the group tonight. How was that? 
Oh yeah, it, it was nice. It was an honor to be actually be on the um, on the field and actually throw a first pitch. That was my first. So you guys got also to take down the banner here between innings, and uh, all of them are also representative in the military between the Army and also the Marines and. Uh, Detective uh, Reginald Johnson, you were actually part of the cleanup at the World Trade Center. Hard to believe it was eight years ago. What was that like then? Yeah, it's one of those experiences that uh, you really are lost for words. You can't really explain it or put enough words to it to understand the magnitude of what happened there. Hard to believe eight years too, huh? Time is actually moving so quickly and it's just flying by. How about uh, the honor of being uh, here tonight and uh, also the way baseball is remembering like we all are as American citizens, 9-11? Well, uh, to be here tonight is very special for me. I want to thank the department for choosing this, uh, all four, four of us, uh, to come out here and represent the uh, city of Miami Finest. And thank you guys for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. And you're mounted patrol too, just like my dad who's watching this game. That's right. Mounted all the way, city. All right, guys. Good to see you. Thank you all for joining us. Some of Miami's finest also with the military as well, the Army and the Marines, guys, and uh, near 20 years in both for some of these gentlemen. Back to you. Yeah, nice to have them out at the ballpark tonight as the Marlins and the Nationals in a 2-2 tie in the sixth. Josh Willingham not facing Josh Johnson, but Brian Sanchez. And Brian Sanchez trying to come back after falling behind 3-0. Good numbers for Sanchez this year. Oh, really. He's been terrific. Really his breakout year in the big leagues. Mm -hmm. And a former national. Hammer hits a high pop that's going to go out of play. There will be a big crowd here tomorrow night. And remember tomorrow night's game starts at, at 6 o'clock. It's a super Saturday, but the University of Miami will uh, have a huge contingent here. So big, big night. We are not allowed to televise the game starting inside the big Fox window at 6 o'clock. Hammer walks. Second time in a row and you start to playing around with things like this and sooner or later they come back and bite you but second time in a row the leadoff man has walked. Yeah, Brian Sanchez last year 12 games with the Nationals. Here is Dukes. Has singled and bounced into a fielder's Dukes. choice. Dukes can't hit. Quickly, it's 0 and 1. The National League West is the closest division race going into play tonight. Colorado 2 behind Los Angeles. Dukes drives that ball to left field. That's hit deep. Coglin goes back, looks up, and makes the catch. He didn't quite get it all. Because of, with the kind of swing he had, if he gets all of that, he gets that ball out of here. Go a little bit on the end of the bat, and just a long out. And tracked nicely by Chris Coglin. And Brian Sanchez happy about that. Wild card race in the American League. Boston's lead over Texas is at two games. Of course, the Giants are four and a half back. The Marlins five and a half back in the National League wild card race. The Yankees cruising along with the best record in baseball at 91 and 50. And they're cruising along tonight uh, after a three run home run by A-Rod to a three nothing lead against the Orioles. That game started late, must have had some rain. Rays are in Boston and it's raining there. Yeah, New York turned really cold and wet. It was getting there last night. You see Tyler Clippard in the bullpen. And yeah, the big match last night was uh, halted, wasn't it? Yes, at the U.S. Open. And a, a lot of the uh, action today was rained out or delayed. We got a taste of that when we got off the bus Oh, in Newark <laughs> to get on the plane at about midnight. Pete Orr with a count 0 and 1. 
Outside corner, good pitch by Sanchez. Sanchez has been used in a variety of roles. The Marlins have stretched him out at times as a middle guy, but Freddie really wants him in these next three weeks to be a seventh, eighth inning guy. And with Josh's short start, that's accelerated. He's a sixth inning guy here tonight, but he may be just a one inning guy. Well, again, it goes back to having to manage that bullpen. The entire road trip, only two starters went six innings. And tonight, JJ, five innings. So now you've got to manage four innings and put the pieces in the right place. And you're really at the point of a season where you have guys like Calero, even Sanchez, Donnelly, guys that you can't use three nights in a row. There are many nights where a manager goes into, and especially Freddie, in these last couple of months, goes into a game, and there are two or three guys that he wants to stay away from. And Hanley goes out. Coughlin comes in and makes the catch, and, and people ask, well, well, so what? I mean, the guys are, are paid to pitch. Pitch them. <laughs> and you can't do that because they'll end up on the disabled list, and you won't have them at all. And as we often talk about, it's uh, okay, you could be in a game two nights in a row, but the night before you may have warmed up to come in a game and you didn't get in the game, but you warmed up and you threw a lot of pitches. So all those things are kept track of. I'll tell you another thing that a lot of people don't realize, there are guys in every bullpen, Marlins bullpen. Oh yeah, it's all around base. Mets bullpen, Nationals bullpen, who if they work one night and you bring them back the next night, what's coming out of their hand is not the same stuff and yeah they can give you another inning or two but it's not the same inning they gave you the night before so you got to manage that way as well and to your point of all the short starts this year you have to say that the Marlins bullpen has been pretty good now the focus is always on the ninth inning and that has not been the best for the Marlins. They've had closing issues from the very start with Lindstrom and with Nunez. But the juggling act to get it to the ninth inning has been pretty good. Nunez misses outside to Nieves. the one thing Brian Sanchez has he has three very good pitches we've talked about his slider that equalizes right-handers the splitter to lefties but he also spots his fastball very well line shot over Hanley and in the left field now that slider not a good one wanted to have that thing break sharply away from Nieves keep it around the ankles Targets out there, and yeah, look at where it stays. And Nieves has a good swing. Mike Morse is coming up. The Nationals have a few players with South Florida ties. And Morse, one of those guys, a Nova High School product. Yeah, they have a youngster that they just called up, had a big night last night, 23-year-old Ian Desmond out of Sarasota High School. His first major league home run had four RBIs in that game last night against the Phillies. Oh, look at that, Tommy. <laughs> that was one of uh, yesterday at, at City Field on the scoreboard. They were flashing City Field first, you know, who had the first hit, first this, first that. And first feline was up there. And remember, on opening day at City Field, they had a cat run on the field. <laughs> By the way, talking about the uh, Marlins bullpen, entering tonight's game, now obviously it'll be added on to 471 innings from the Marlins bullpen, which is third in the National League. San Diego the most. Oh, 
And the Padres, of course, have had their injury issues. PV was hurt and then traded. Young has been hurt. So they've gone through the same thing. But without the same result, San Diego Padres are 63 and 78. Morse. Sanchez has buried a couple breaking balls in the dirt. Dan Meyer is up. Morse had an RBI pinch hit. Pinch hit single in one of the games of that series in Washington. Oh, he went after a 2-0 slider. That's what happens when that slider's tight enough and you can't pick up the spin. 2-0, you're thinking fastball, so initially that's what you see. And then you swing and it disappears. Hit 339 in AAA this year. Came over in the Ryan Langerhans deal. One of Jim Holly's favorite players. Langer Hans going to Seattle. Morse coming from the Mariner organization. Always hit there, just wasn't a place to, to play. I mean, kind of a, a first baseman. What at this are we point. talking about? He kind of outgrew the uh, shortstop yes, position. He's got Two two. Oh, he tried to split her. That's a good pitch. It, it moved inside. It was probably off the plate, but Morse didn't bite. Him. And he took it. Not that bad though, if you think about where it crossed the plate. Fastball drilled center field and deep. Back goes Maven to the track, looking, reaching, can't get it. Off his glove. Two runs will score. Willingham comes across. Nieves comes across. And Morse comes through with a two run double. Well, he had to go a long way to get it. And just as Maven and his glove got to the ball, he hit the wall. Well, he had to come with that fastball after missing with the splitter. I thought he might try another slider. This guy's a good fastball hitter. Back goes Maven. I thought he was going to make the play, but right as the ball reached the wall, he reached the wall. So a big hit for the Nationals and a 4-2 lead in the sixth. And it's Willie Harris now. Letter high strike. Couple walks and a strikeout. There's Morse. And Sanchez misses outside. Now it's two and one. Josh Johnson went five, and once again the Nationals kind of chewed him up early. Work pitch count, a lot of base runners. Uncharacteristically, Josh had four walks. Also had seven strikeouts. High pop, Hanley calling. And Hanley catching. Inning over, but the Nationals strike for two on a pinch hit double by Mike Morse.
shall we freeze? Ah, oh, yeah, the pop up that Bake made the play on. Good break. Good play. Our Frost Brood, of course, like Freeze Cam. Well, this game has changed here with one swing. Mike Morse, the local kid, driving one off of Maven's glove at the wall in center field. No, right now the Marlins need to bounce back. They have just the two base hits. One of those single by Josh Johnson. The other, the two-run homer by Hanley. As you get into the bullpen now, Tyler Clippard. Who the Marlins did see in Washington. Saw some fastballs and curves and a few change-ups. Fake little check swing over Clifford's head. Guzman. Oh! At first base. Baker called out. Naked eye tells me he beat it. We'll get a chance to see it again. Little hesitation by Guzman, and that made it a closer play. Yeah, it looked like he had trouble getting it out of his glove. We'll see how close this is. There's a hesitation. Bang, bang. Wow. Call him safe, call him out. One way or the other. And unfortunately, first base umpire Jim Reynolds saw the out. Ugly now. Flipper with a breaking ball that drops in for a strike. Ugly tonight is flied out and struck out. Marlins bullpen has Brendan Donnelly and Andrew Miller up. One and two. Just two hits tonight for the Marlins. In stark contrast to last night, when the Marlins put 13 runs on the board. Two, two coming. Whoa, look out. count time call Ladies and gentlemen, on this day we pause to honor and pay respect to the lives lost in the terrorist attacks of September 11 2001 at this time we ask that you please join us for a moment of remembrance Thank you. And so Dan Ugly will climb back in with a count at three and two. The Marlins trailing four two to the Washington Nationals. Tyler Clippard in relief of J.D. Martin who stands to win this game if the Nationals bullpen can hold this lead. Both starting pitchers going just five innings. And a changeup, Ugla strikes out on. So an over three night for Dan, and Clifford looks good coming out of the bullpen. A lot of offers uh, tonight in the Marlins lineup. Here's Cody. Ross has popped out and bounced out.
kind of gives you that herky jerky delivery. And off that will go the change up, the breaking ball. He spots that fastball. He's like a slim down Brendan Donnelly. Complete with goggles. Mm -hmm. O2 is up and in. The count, a ball and two strikes. And the Nationals beating the Phillies last night. The Phillies at home against the Mets tonight with a 2 0 lead. And runners aboard in the bottom of the sixth. Right now, Cody Ross saying something out to uh, Tyler Clifford. Here's the 2 2. Got him. Boy, change up struck out Ugla, change up strikes out Ross. said uh turn on the news and you know hung up on her because it was eight in the morning mm -hmm. she called right back and told me to turn it on and after that for the next you know for the next week I couldn't do anything just sit in the uh, sit in the hotel room and very sad what happened Nick Johnson of course then a New York Yankee on 9-11 2001 in Manhattan when the plane struck the World Trade Center Freddy Gonzalez was the third base coach for the Marlins uh, back in 2001. He told me Marlins Live tonight he was coming out of a Home Depot when he heard the news and, uh, of course, raced home. We all remember that one of those moments in your life. and never forget where you were in baseball remembering victims here tonight, 9-11, 2009. Guys? All right, thanks, Craig. Andrew Miller's in the ball game, and the uh, tall lefty trying to redeem himself, so to speak, has had an uneven season at this level. And the fist trying to coax an inning out of him here in the seventh. A short start by Josh Johnson, just five innings. Brian Sanchez pitched the sixth. The Nationals got two off of J.J. on the homer by Dunn in the first. And then two in the sixth on the Morse double. Shallow center, Ugla out there with a reaching catch on the run. No, good job. Good jump by Dan Ugla. And, and a good job by Andrew Miller going right after Guzman. And remember, Andrew Miller started the, the year working out of the bullpen. First couple of appearances were as a reliever. But a good jump by Dan, good concentration.
Now Ryan Zimmerman. And he takes a strike. Andrew Miller coming up from New Orleans. Was one and two with a 5.75 ERA in New Orleans. So he struggled down in AAA as well. Two little adjustments he told me the other day that, that he made. And sometimes uh, adjustments that aren't that major can help out. The way he sets the, the ball right there, keeps it right there in the glove. That's one. And the other, he, he moved over to the other side of the pitching rubber. He's on third base side now. And those may sound like simple things, but when you've been pitching all your life and you make that change, that could be pretty dramatic. Zimmerman drives that ball to left center field and deep. Off the top of the scoreboard, it's gone. That means it must have hit something other than the top of the scoreboard. It bounced right back to Maven. The Marlins are not offering any argument. And so it's a long ways from where we are sitting. And for Ryan Zimmerman, Another home run at the Marlins expense, 29 on the season now. And the lead is now 5-2. Let's see where this ball hits. Well, he got a fastball. Andrew Miller's throwing nothing but fastballs. Zimmerman's ninth career home run against the Fish. Of those nine home runs, I think believe three or walk offs yeah it hit on the uh, facing of the folded up seats just over the scoreboard So we knew the Nationals could swing the bats, and they've done that. And Miller's fastball is fouled back. It's two and two. Just stretches that lead a little bit more. Gets tougher and tougher, fewer innings to go. Dunn smacks it into the seats. That's a foul ball. They're about an hour away from starting in San Francisco. The Dodgers are there. Same in San Diego. That's where the Rockies are planted tonight. Three game series in San Diego. Three game series in Los Angeles. The Phillies and the Mets opening a four gamer tonight. And that's still two nothing Phillies. And it's in the top of the seventh. Cole Hamels is still in that game. But the Mets are threatening with one out. They've got runners at second and at third. We may have to fire up the, the music and the mother of all scoreboards just to get that rally over the hump. Until he can learn to throw that pitch for strikes, hitters at this level will just sit back and wait for that fastball. Here is Hammer. Couple walks and a strikeout. The leadoff walk in the sixth. Especially painful for Brian Sanchez. Sharply hit. Hanley. Ugla. The turn is clean to Johnson. And the Marlins get the double play. But the Nationals get another run on another Ryan Zimmerman homer.
every day our brave troops and their families stand up for us. For years, we've asked so much of so few. Now we have a chance to serve these heroes. To give time, offer comfort, or lend a hand. To ease the burden on a military family. Let's honor their service by volunteering ours. In South Florida, seventh inning stretch, and the Washington Nationals right now are beating the fish. And they're doing it with the long ball. A couple of home runs and a very long two run pinch hit double by Mike Morse. And it's 5 2. The home runs by Adam Dunn and Ryan Zimmerman. Tyler Clippard worked a very neat and tidy sixth inning, a 1 2 3 6. He struck out Dan Ugla and Cody Ross. And Jim Riggleman happy to keep him in there to face 8 9 1. For the Marlins in a game that certainly the Marlins can ill afford to lose on a night where the Phillies are beating the Mets. The Mets do have a run in that inning. And it's 2 1 now. The Phillies on top of the Mets in the top of the seventh. And that music can mean only one thing the mother of all scoreboards, the Cubs have won. You see that Phillies lead, Pedro Feliz having a big night. Atlanta has scored first in St. Louis. And the two games of interest on the coast, the Rockies in San Diego, the Dodgers in San Francisco. And the game uh, of most interest, this one right here, the Marlins need to come back down three. So here's Maven, Brett Hayes is on deck. But that could change. Boy, maybe didn't like that call, and he's got good reason. <laughs> Flippard's slider, and it's 0 and 1. Two. Here's that first pitch to Cameron Maben. Wow. Tough to reach that one. And a fastball. And he rears back and throws it by him. He's retired four straight. The last three struck out. So Tyler Clippard has come in and throwing the ball nicely. Here's Brett Hayes now. Hayes who hit his first big league home run on the road trip. Yep, hit it at uh, Nationals Park. His minor league career. Fred hit that home run against Victor Gratta. We barely have a team. Really? Oh, and two. It's one of those uh, names. We may forget the name Victor Gratta, but Brett Hayes never will. Lindstrom and Martinez loosening up. And Hayes goes down quickly. Tyler Clippard has struck out four in a row. Mm. Here's Coglin now. Chris is 0 for 3.
One and zero. Toyota trend: The Marlins have won 23 of the last 28 home games against the Nationals, including 10 in a row. Hogland didn't like that call. And it's one and one. It's a uh, a run that the Marlins have had last year: 14 and three against the Nationals. Soft pop up is out of play, and this year 11 and four. I'll tell you what, Tyler Clifford has come in here with three quality pitches. Yes, a live fastball, an excellent changeup, and a decent little breaking ball. So he's had the hitters off balance. He's blown the fastball by a few, had them fooled with that changeup. Had Chris Coughlin way out in front of that last pitch, the changeup. Skied in the air to right. Dukes makes the catch a one, two, three, seventh. Clifford, two perfect innings of relief. A couple of home runs. Adam Dunn against Josh Johnson in the first. That was a two run shot. And then Ryan Zimmerman against Andrew Miller. That was a solo shot, but a pair of homers. See, look, even Zimmerman said that was out. And our checkers double of the game. Well, the Marlins are going to come back in this game. They need the bullpen to keep it at 5 2. Christian Martinez will get an inning here. He goes into the eighth, taking over for Andrew Miller. Both relievers have given up at least a run. Brian Sanchez gave up a couple. And you just saw Zimmerman hit it out against Miller. That was the only run that Andrew gave up. Josh Johnson gave up a couple in his five innings. Ross runs down the Dukes fly ball. Here comes Pete Orr. One pitch. One out for Christian Martinez. Or shortens the bunt and he takes a strike. Well, if the uh, if the Marlins can keep it close and get to the ninth. Be interesting to see how the Nationals handle it. Fly ball to left. Coglin wanders towards that bullpen and makes the catch. You remember last night, Mike McDougal could not close out the game against the Phillies. They had to have Ron Valone come in and get it done. Family Sunday is on the 13th. 
That's the uh, end of this weekend, so you got a couple days to get ready for the Nationals and the Fish at 110. And it's Hanley Bobblehead Day. 5,000 fans will get the Hanley Ramirez Bobblehead, courtesy of Preferred Care Partners. 1-877 Marlins. Pitch is low to Will Nieves. That was a hanging breaking ball that Nieves hit for a single on Brian Sanchez back in the sixth inning. That kept that inning alive and allowed Mike Morse to come to the plate, the pinch hitter, and drive in two runs with his double. You see Bergman getting ready. Pretty good pick by Pat Listash, a little infielder, had a nice major league career. Rookie of the year with the Milwaukee Brewers. Davis checks his swing. And the count three and one. Two out walk to the Nationals catcher. You know, you look at the line, and the Nationals have five hits, but the Marlins have walked six. So there's 11 base runners there. And Clipper's been throwing so well. We saw Berkman loosening up, but it looks like uh, Jim Riggleman's going to stay with Clipper. Why not? He's retired six in a row, four strikeouts. So was Bergman up in the case that the Nationals had something going? If they get a guy to second, then maybe they pinch hit for Clipper? I don't know. Only Jim Brickleman knows. So far, he's done pretty well. 5-2, Nationals. In South Florida, Marlins down. Chewy looking disillusioned right now, but there's two innings left. It's a 5-2 game. And Tyler Clippert is pitching so well, as Tommy pointed out, Jim Riggleman says, what the heck? Run him out there for the third inning. His first two innings, all he's done is retired everybody he's faced and struck out four. 
Well, he's done it with an assortment of good pitches. We talked about it. Breaking ball, change up, good fastball. And Jim Riggleman, we talk about players uh, uh, that are on teams that are out of it or are playing for jobs next year. Uh, Jim Riggleman managing for a job next year, whether or not the Nationals retain him. He's the interim manager after taking over for Manny Acton. That's a tough deal because his uh, his roster really hasn't improved much from when Manny Acta had it. And he had a little spark when Niger Morgan joined the team. Nick Johnson takes inside from Clifford and it's 1-0. Yeah, he took over July 13th. And as we pointed out, he's managed in the major leagues before with San Diego, the Cubs, and Seattle. A change up by Clifford has been really good. He's been able to spot the fastball for strikes and when he's needed a, a good pitch. He got both Ugla and Ross swinging at the changeup and he got a strike there on the 1 0 pitch to Nick. The Phillies have added to their lead and it's now 3 1 in the bottom of the seventh in Philadelphia. Makes it a world of difference when you get your starter. You mentioned Hamels was in there in the seventh. Gives you that kind of performance. Johnson rips one to right center field. Harris going back, won't get it. To the wall it goes. Nick trots into second base. He has, with the hamstring, his trot is almost Ruthian. You know those shots of Babe Ruth trotting around the bases in black and white? Kind of short, short steps, but he crushes this ball. Best hit ball off Clipper. There's the little short steps. <laughs> and no chance at all for Willie Harris, but a ball well struck. And here's Nick Johnson tonight. Four at bats. He's walked. He's been hit by a pitch. He's doubled, and he flied out. So he's one for two, and on base the other two times and Jim Riggleman says well you know what maybe let's go to the bullpen now especially after watching Johnson hit that ball about 400 feet so Clifford exits Bergman's coming in here's our Marooney called to the bullpen Hair color, just as middle relievers keep their team in the game, you two can stay in the game with Just for Man hair color. And the Ramirez at the plate, awaiting the first pitch from Jason Bergman. And it's a slider, he fouls it, it's 0 1. Well, certainly a guy the Marlins have seen before. He features all four pitches, and they saw him in that series in Washington. Now it's just a matter of trying to put something together here in this inning. Got off to a good start with a leadoff double from Nick Johnson. 
Hanley's homeward and then was walked intentionally in the third and semi intentionally in the fifth. Kicks away. Hanley didn't offer at it. And Johnson trots down to third. So at the very least, the Marlins look like they're in a position to pick up a run here in the eighth. See where Derek Jeter has picked up a base hit tonight. So he is now the all time Yankees hit leader. And I would expect they are already uh, cutting and writing the monument that they're going to put in Monument Park for Jeter. <laughs> no question about that. Nick's not going anywhere. The ball would have to bounce off the catcher and maybe roll out of play for Nick to score at this point. As limited as his mobility is. Yeah, and then with nobody out, he's certainly not going to take any chances. And of course, the infield's back. Mike McDougal starts to loosen up. The infield's back there. They'll give a run to take it out here. Bergman misses outside, and it's three and one. I'll tell you what, since Handley's home run, he sure hasn't seen much close, has he? No. He has an eight game hitting streak now. He's 12 for his last 26. He's hit right around 400 since August 1st. And he walks. So Hanley, the third walk in the ball game. And now runners at the corners. Here is Cantu. So while Bergman may not have wanted to deal with Hanley, still he puts him on base. Yeah, to me, that's crazy. So, you know, now you got to pay the price, Jason Bergman, because. You've all of a sudden now brought the potential tying run to the plate. You got to go after Hanley. If he hits a home run, he hits a home run. You still have the lead. That's what drives managers and pitching coaches crazy. Amen. You know, if you're afraid to pitch to him, just say so. Walking. He seems to be surprised that his pitching coach, Steve McCaddy, is out there. McCaddy ought to be saying something to him. Stuff that he used to hear from Billy Martin. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I got to tell the story. I asked McCaddy today about he was one of those four Oakland pitchers, had all the complete games under Billy Martin. I said, what, what do you remember about those? He said, Billy used to come to the mound about the ninth inning. He'd say, look over your shoulder. Do you want that guy to come into this game? And Steve McCaddy said, no, I don't want him to come in. Billy said, well, I don't either. So finish this thing. <laughs> That's a great they story. They did not have an impressive bullpen. No. Well, Cantu, with runners at the corner, has been a tough night for Cantu. Low strike, and it's 0-1. Twice, they have pitched around Hanley. An intentional walk in the third. And with two on, Cantu hit a soft fly ball to the left for the third out. And in the fifth, they walked Hanley to put two on. Cantu tapped back to the mound. And he hooks this one foul, and it's 0-2. So Cantu in the spot here where he's got to put the ball in play and try to score Johnson. Ron Vallone and McDougal are ready to go. They both worked in last night's win over the Phillies. That was the stay alive swing. Mm, yeah. Pitch is close. Better foul it off. Sometimes that gets you a little deeper into the count and gets you a better pitch to hit. The loan may be getting ready for Baker. Bergman misses the Cantu. And 
And Jorge stays alive on that low fastball. One and two. Pretty good fastball from Bergman. He gets it in that 93 to 95 range. Marlins have won seven of eight, but they've fallen behind the Nationals here tonight. 5-2, a throw to first, and Hanley is back. Those two over there at first base, Dunn and Hanley, traded two-run homers. Back in the first inning. High pop-up. Dunn. Makes the catch. It's been a rough night for Jorge Cantu. So here's Baker, and let's see what Jim Riggleman does. Does he go get Valone? Because if that happens, you might see Paulino come up. Or does he stick with Bergman? I think we're going to see Ron Valone because here comes Riggleman. Right. Um, he motioned the, to the right hander, though. He wants McDougal. Here's our Maroon. He calls. Thousand just in the Kane family alone, teachers, students, faculty, they'll all be here tomorrow joining many others, expecting over 35,000 tomorrow. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Take a look at this 19,000 already out to UM employees. Activities for the entire family. The pregame party starts at 5. Keep in mind, it'll go past the start of the game, but the game starts at 6 10. Player autograph sessions, inflatables, a dunk tank. Going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. And Willie Chirino here as well after the game on Hispanic Heritage Night. Should be a lot of fun tomorrow. Guys, big moment in the game for the Marlins. Back to you. Yeah, it is. Craig, don't let your Syracuse buddy see that shirt on. <laughs> I'm taking it off now. <laughs> now, they're my Florida team. <laughs> All right, this is an interesting matchup because you've got McDougal. And remember in the ball game on that Sunday where the Marlins <laughs> lost two two-run leads, it was McDougal whom the Marlins rallied to get two runs in the top of the ninth. That was the... Same inning that Zimmerman hit the walk-off shot. And McDougal was very wild in that inning. And he gets Baker with Ugla behind him. Runners at the corners. And Bake grounds one out to second. Got one there. Guzman's turn. And the Marlins inning goes up in smoke. One pitch from McDougal. He gets two outs after the Cantu pop-up. And the Marlins are still down by two.
Knocked that one off of Cameron Maven's glove, then off the wall. A two run pinch hit double. That was back in the sixth inning. That gave the Nationals the lead. Check out the new Arm Performance Vehicle at your local Jaguar dealer or on Jaguar. USA.com. I think when you saw the replay of that, you saw John Baker set inside for that fastball, and the fastball that Brian Sanchez threw pretty much middle of the plate for Morris. So here's the ninth. The news is not good for the Marlins in a lot of ways. Down 5 2 here. Phillies up 4 1, going to the top of the ninth inning. And I guarantee the Phillies have been checking that scoreboard a little bit too. They've they've won just four out of ten, their last ten. And they they know the Marlins have been playing some good ball, especially on this last road trip. Tonight has not been one of those games, though. So. There's that Philly score. We'll let you know who comes in and tries to close that game for Philadelphia. Cole Hamels went six and two thirds. Chanho Park a third of an inning. And Brett Myers has been in. He was the eighth inning guy. He threw just six pitches, so they might might have him available to come back out. With seven walks tonight. You just can't win games when you walk seven guys. Well, when you walk seven guys and you can't score on a first and third. And nobody out. Here's Guzman. Yeah, that's not going to help either. Martinez gets a strike. McDougal threw one pitch and got the double play ball, so he's obviously fresh enough to come in and, and pitch the ninth as well. Yeah, you wonder how Jim Riggleman was going to handle that had McDougal had to throw a few pitches. Johnson has it. Hanley's turn. Nice job by Martinez to get over, but Guzman runs well and he beats the relay. But it uh, it answers uh, it's it, the question is answered. Just because he had to throw just the one pitch, now he can come out to try to close it in the ninth. He almost got a sense, too. There's always the possibility that Riggleman looking at the Marlins lineup, thinking to himself, all right, if I get to the ninth and it's tight and Coughlin and Johnson come up, would I rather have Valone face him or McDougal face him? Maybe those were the two guys he had available and he. Use McDougal in that spot, even though McDougal has been his closer. Yeah. Remember last night, McDougal couldn't close against the Phillies. He gave up a ton of runs in that ninth inning, and Valone came in and got the double play ball from Ryan Howard to end the ball game. Ground ball, Hanley's way. Ugla turns it, and Zimmerman bounces into a double play. And a nice inning by Christian Martinez. To the bottom of the ninth we go. The fish need three.
Report is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance by Tobacco Free Florida. Who wants you to be tobacco free by FPNL? To learn smart ways to conserve energy, log on to FPNL.com and by Metro PCS. Get plans starting at $30 a month. South Florida tonight, Washington on top, 5 2. Mike McDougal stays in. The Nationals do make a couple of changes. Justin Maxwell comes into the ball game, and Maxwell will go in the five spot. That's Josh Willingham's position. Willie Harris slides over from center to left to take over for the hammer. And it still is Mac the ninth, as they used to call him when he was closing for Kansas City. McDougal still in there. Ugla, Ross, and Maven. McDougal can get wild. He's one of those guys that has one primary pitch, and that's a fastball. Yeah, everything's pretty hard. And it moves all over the place. Tough night for Ugla. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. In fact, the, the bottom of the order for the Marlins has really had a rough night. You add Ugla, Ross, and Maven together, and they are 0 for 9. Then throw in Jorge Cantu 0 for 4. The bottom part of the order has not gotten a hit yeah, because the only hit was Josh Johnson. <laughs> the bottom part of the order as far as players have been held hitless tonight. And you could start from Cantu down. Cantu, Baker, Ugla, Ross, and Maven. Two and one. Left center field and deep. I mean deep. Gone. His name is Dan Ugla. Wow. Whoa. That's a blue cedar in an area where you rarely see a blue cedar. Yeah, usually the blue cedars are more in left center or down the line. That was well over that National League scoreboard. 28 on the season now for Ugla. Boy, now the inability to get that run in the eighth is huge. Boy, look at that back leg extension and driving it into those blue seats a long way away. Cody Ross is 0 for 3. Well, remember the Nationals scored three runs on five pitches last Sunday. Though it certainly can be done. So he's thrown six pitches. Six pitches. This inning. That might take a few more. <laughs> but now the Marlins do have the tying run coming to the plate, and it won't be Cameron Maven. Here comes Ross Glode. And that's all you can ask for. There was a breaking ball. He tried a little slider there. All you can ask for is that opportunity in the bottom half of the last inning to get the tying run up there to get that close. By the way, the Phillies game has gone final. It was Ryan Madsen who came out to close it. And Madsen actually gave up a run in the ninth inning. But the Phillies win 4-2. They beat the Mets, and Madsen does get the save. Load against McDougal. Ball one. Oh, Ross Glode. Brings all those pinch hits to the plate. 16, about 31 pinch hits between Claude and Helms. And Wes is on deck. Steve McCaddy's on his way out to mount. And as I kind of expected, Tommy, Vallone is back up. And when you've got Coglin and Johnson right around the corner, I think Vallone is probably getting ready for that pair. You got Helms on deck. There's that final. The Phillies have one, so the Marlins must come back and must 
win this ball game if they want to stay five back in the East. Otherwise, they'll fall six back. You see Bonifacio back there. An ugly homer, a Ross single has opened up the bottom of the nine. This is the McDougal that the Marlins saw on Sunday in D.C. when they rallied and got two runs off him in the ninth inning. You read scouting reports on him and his uh, wildness can go from hitter to hitter. Ninety four miles an hour with that fastball and you can see how much it moved it started middle of the plate and ended up on the corner. Wow. Make that's that's what's amazing. He made one pitch just almost a perfect pitch and then missed badly with that one. So it's not just hitter to hitter, it's pitch to pitch. Pitch to pitch now, yeah. <laughs> Let's change the scouting report on him. Well, you want to be selective if you're glowed. 3-1 coming. He walked him. And so now... Let's see how the Marlins play this. With runners first and second. Helms was on deck. Now, Rick, you, now you have that bunting situation. Everything's going to move here. You're going to get a pinch runner for Ross Claude. Brett Carroll. And it looks like Bonifacio is going to hit, but he's going to be trying to bunt. Now, we've talked about this numerous times. We saw him do it the other night. In this situation, sacrifice bunt. Bonifacio needs to just think he's bunting for a base hit. He's a better bunter when he does that. And that's so odd to hear you say because in this situation, it is preached to players that you want to give yourself up. That's why it's a sacrifice bunt. And a lot of times, guys try to bunt for a base hit when they should be sacrificing. But as we've seen, Bonifacio can't sacrifice bunt. Or at least he has a lot of trouble doing it. Ross at second, Carroll's at first. He squares, and he misses, and it's 0-1. Don't square. Try to bunt for a base hit. Plus, he tried to bunt a ball, a pitch that wasn't a strike. He may get the job done, but I'll tell you right now, I'm not crazy about this option. And and the reason why he can't bunt for a sack bunt, he's proven that. He may learn to, and he needs to, to stay around here at the major league level for a long time. And now you got McDougal out in front of the count, 0-2. Down low, 98 miles an hour. So this is not an easy fastball to jump on if you're Bonifacio, who has shown better plate discipline and a little more success at the plate since he's come out of the everyday lineup. Marlins have been able to use him a little more selectively. One, two. Mm. Boy, just an awful at bat. That's a wasted at bat in a key situation in a ball game. So here's Coglin now. Valone's ready. And we'll see if Riggleman is going to stick with the right hander. It looks like he will. Johnson is on deck. 
There's one out. Good speed at first with the tying run. That's Carroll. Ross is at second. Coughlin takes outside. I don't think there's a chance that McDougal would face Nick Johnson. It was Johnson that had a two run single against McDougal. That was the big hit in the two run ninth last Sunday. Which is an interesting move, though, in itself. If you're going to have McDougal pitch to Coughlin, why have Malone pitch to Johnson? A lot of interesting moves here in this inning. One and one. That's outside and it's two and one. Coughlin's a great guy to have at the plate right now. Not only can he drive it in the gap, but he has great plate discipline. So if McDougal is missing, he's going to work himself into a, a hitter's count just like this at two and one. Chopper over the middle. Got one there, got two there, and the Marlins get a run, but that's it. Another inning fizzles, and this one, their last chance. Coglin bounces into a double play. The inability to move two runners up.